I'm doing everything I can to kick this habit. Stick around and we'll get right to it. If you've been following along either in the newsletter or over on Twitter, you will probably already know that I've been working on upgrading my shack. One of the things that I've been trying to accomplish while I've been doing this upgrade is to eliminate as many things as I possibly can that rely on grid power. I want everything to run on 12 volts if possible. For instance, one of the upgrades included a new 22-inch monitor for the shack. This particular monitor happens to run on 12 volts. Now, I have no clue how to pronounce this. I'm going to guess that the model or the uh, manufacturer is Kuri, but the model number is 22 November 1 or 22 N1. It's a 1920 by 1080 display. It has HDMI and VGA inputs, and it's only 73 bucks. I'll leave a link to that monitor down in the description below. By the way, at 25% brightness, it only draws about 800 milliamps of power. Several of the laptops that you've seen on the channel over the last year and a half, maybe two years, are all running on 12 volts. That includes the Evolve laptop, which by the way, as of the time of this recording, is back in stock at Micro Center. And I think this time they're about 20 bucks more than the last time they were in stock. Uh, so they're coming in at around 80 bucks. But who knows, there might be a Black Friday sale on them as well. In addition to the Evolve, we've also got the Woe computer. There's another gateway laptop that I ran across that is also uh, 12 volts or powered by 12 volts. And I'll have another one coming in a video next week. HTs are another one of those things that I'm trying to only purchase HTs that actually charge with 12 volts. And they don't need some weird voltage like 9.1 or 8.3 volts to actually charge. So the FT5, the FT70, and the FT65 are all good candidates uh, and they will all allow you to charge with 12 volts. Now, the downside to that is, uh, at least for the FT65, you still need the cradle to do the charging. But with the FT5 and the FT70, that cradle isn't necessary. Now, I haven't solved all of the issues yet. Uh, for instance, the Raspberry Pi. I've got several of those back behind me that are always running. Each of those involves a buck converter to get the voltage from 12 volts to 5 volts. And there's really just no way around that. Even if we buy a hat to go on the Raspberry Pi that accepts 12 volts as the input, well, it's still got to do the conversion before it feeds the actual power into the Raspberry Pi. So somewhere along the lines, there's going to be a buck converter. The critical thing there is finding ones that don't cause any additional RFI in your shack. So why am I really on this tangent when it comes to making sure everything runs on 12 volts? Well, there's a couple of different reasons. First of all, it's just easier. I don't have to worry about oddball voltages in the shack, I can run one main power supply that will run all of the 12 volt appliances in the shack. In addition, in the event of a power outage, it's quick and easy to set up a system that will auto swap to a battery backup. Fewer wall warts we have in the shack, well, that's less potential RFI that's going to interfere with us playing radio. Now, I haven't got all of this exactly worked out yet, but it's more of a quest that I'm on trying to convert everything over to 12 volts. I also have plans to upgrade the battery that's serving as my backup battery. Currently, I'm running a Miati. I think that's a 35 or 36 amp hour battery. I've got a new 100 amp hour battery that's going to be in route that will be the new backup battery for the shack. Now, one word of caution, you don't necessarily want to connect every single thing, even though we can once we've moved to 12 volts, you don't necessarily want to connect that to your backup battery. For instance, that new monitor, 
uh, is not connected to my backup battery system. So basically, I've got two circuits in the shack. Uh, both of them are 12 volts, but one of them is connected to the backup battery supply, and the other one is not. That way, if I don't happen to be in the shack and the power fails, it kind of extends that battery as long as possible without running unnecessary things. On the other hand, if I'm in the shack and I need that monitor and the power's out, I always have the option of connecting it to the backup battery and being able to still use that nice big monitor that's being powered by the laptop. So how many of you guys have already started kind of making this transition and are actually way ahead of me? And I'm curious to see how many of you are just plugging in the wall warts, converting the AC to DC for whichever particular appliance you need to power in the shack. Do you run into much trouble with RFI on the radio because of those wall warts? If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.